Yo guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and finally F1 2019 career mode is back on the channel. Today we are here for round 15 for the Singapore Grand Prix. If you guys missed round 14 for the Italian Grand Prix Ferrari's home race, then go watch the episode by clicking the card in the top right hand corner of the screen or in the link down below in the description. Now for this episode guys, we are back in a big, big way. First of all, on screen you can see the weather conditions. We've got mixed conditions in both practice, qualifying and the race also, we have two upgrades on the car for this race, engine power and drag reduction on the engine and aero side of things. But unfortunately, those two upgrades are not going to be enough. As you can see on screen right now, Red Bull, Renault, Haas all push on. The good news is we overtake Mercedes as the fourth best team. But that's about where the good news ends because, um, yeah, the top three teams, wow, incredible. And you know what? I've, I've been thinking about it for a long time. You know, I've been away for the last week in Budapest and... Um, I've been taking some time to reflect and think what the best thing to do is, and I'm going to make the decision. I'm making it right here and right now. We're going to focus completely on next season. So pretty much those might be the last upgrades performance-wise you might see on this car this season, I think. Um, there might be one here or there just to keep things, you know, up, you know, kind of up to date and trying to stay high up, you know, in, in, in the standings and try and stay as the fourth best team. But generally speaking... I'm going to start putting away a lot of R&D points, and I mean a lot of R&D points, to um, purchase all those ultimate and major upgrades over the winter and uh, really work on the car. So we're also going to do a lot of um, upgrades when it comes to making upgrades cheaper. Uh, also, the chance of failures happening, we're going to reduce that as well. And also, just to touch up and make sure the, the durability is on point. So we're going to do all those, pretty much all those boring upgrades, which no one likes to see. We're going to do all of those for the rest of the season, whilst also trying to save as many points as possible. And hopefully, next season is the one. However, let's not get too down ourselves, because um, you might be thinking, okay, the season's over. Well, not exactly, because I'm currently still second in the Drivers' Championship, and also Ferrari are still second in the Constructors' Championship. So we're still in with a shout, and uh, you know we, we can still do bits. Actually, I'm third in the Drivers' Championship, sorry, second in the, in the Constructors'. So we're still doing bits, and we, it can still be a good season, and you never know what could happen. And um, we've got to try and keep fighting, because... We want to try and do well. We know we are Ferrari, and I just want to, you know, wave the white flag and give up. So we're still going to push on and try our absolute best. And straight away, here we are in Q1, and uh, straight away, sector one, two turns down on Lucas Weber. For this weekend, I'm running 105% AI difficulty. Um, I did some practice, and it seemed about the right way for me to go. The car felt right, and uh, my laptops were more or less accurate. You know, relative to being the fourth best team on the grid. So. Um, yeah, overall, you can see currently midway through Q1 now and uh, coming towards the end of our one and only run in this session, hopefully in this part of qualifying. And currently, it was looking okay. It was about half second, six tenths off Weber after two sectors. But then this final sector, I was losing a lot of time. The Ferrari really struggles through here. You know, it is a downfall sector, something the Ferrari doesn't really have, you know, since the patch. And uh, you can see that we lose a little bit of time, quite a bit of time to be fair in the final sector, 2.1 off the pace. But luckily enough, we still go through in P14, Sebastian Vettel there in P8 in the other Ferrari. And uh, the gaps the, speak for themselves, to be honest, with the Red Bull of Lucas Weber leading the way and Charlotte Clare not too far behind. But now in Q2, I actually went out straight away because the rain was actually uh, coming down already. Even though the monitor it said it was meant to arrive right at the end of the session, the rain arrived in Q2, which was surprising. It caught everybody out. Luckily for me, I saw it. I did my setup changes, and I went out straight away, and only the two Haas cars are ahead of me on track. So we're going to get a pretty decent track condition to try and set a lap time here. So hopefully this lap is good enough. We're going to see if we could try and make sure we keep the lap together. Make no mistakes, preferably, because uh, obviously we're, we're only going to get one chance at this lap, so we've got to try and keep it nice and tidy. And hopefully that will be good enough to get us through into Q3. Straight away, you can see sector one's actually been pretty damn good. The track is still relatively dry, and the rain is only live this minute, but it is picking up quite quickly. So um, we've got to try our best to make sure we stay on it. As you can see now, sector one done and dusted. Not too bad. No reference lap times or second times just yet. So we're going to just set up. That felt pretty good. And that looked pretty good on paper. And we're going to use, uh, I believe that's Magnus in front of us, as a visual reference in terms of um, how good or bad our lap really is so we're going to just try and follow him also guys for this episode uh, there's a highly requested one in the comments I've actually turned off the driver name tags because um, people wanted to see a bit more realism so basically you only know who the driver is via helmet number or if they appear on the in the top left in the position box so uh, yeah we're going to see how that one pans out if you guys want to see the return name tags let me know in the comments down below and uh, we'll get back onto it but nonetheless now you can see towards the end of sector 2 into sector 3 the track is starting to get quite damp now and the oversteer is starting to kick in, and also the understeer as well. And the car starting to feel pretty rough around most corners. I'm just trying to hold on to the car as best as I can 
and try and bring it home as Magnussen sets the pace. So actually, the Haas that overtook me was actually Charlotte Clark. So there you go, I've got it wrong already without having the name tag. But now, you know, for the final few corners here, just trying to hang on to the car as best as we can, so close to the wall there, as we now go up towards the final couple of corners, throwing the car in, hoping for the grip to arrive as the Clark goes P1, and we're going to go P3 behind both of the Haas cars, about a second off the Haas. So overall, not too bad, a decent lap, and everybody else behind did, some of them did improve, but the majority... Um, with just the Red Bulls who were the ones that were quicker as you'd expect because their car's very quick but the bad news is Sebastian Vettel got knocked out in P13 so a poor qualifying for the other side of the Ferrari garage as we lose one of the cars but nonetheless now in Q3 we're going to go for two runs in this session this is the end of my first one and Q3 was still actually wet at the start so I had to go a little bit later and I should go P2 because the AI set their lap times on a slightly more damp track and I probably got the first lap on the mostly dry track so we go P2, but that's not really accurate or definitive. As we now go on to our final runs, I'm going to be the first one, oh, sorry, the last one to cross the line. So uh, the lap time will hopefully be definitive. And where we cross the line is going to be where we're going to end up in this session. So straight away, one, two, and three, all about hooking up. They'll all lock up on the front left, but overall, nice and tidy as the flag drops. Now down towards turn number four, down a couple of gears, attack the inside curb and get on the gas as soon as possible, just brushing the wall on the left. And now open up DRS, use some overtake ERS as we go down towards the end of the straight towards the end of sector one and currently fastest here as you'd expect on Lucas Weber as the track is now optimal conditions for a hot lap in qualifying as we now go down towards turn I believe turn seven the right hander and then down towards turn eight this one's very tricky this one because it's kind of got a double apex and the wall on the right catches you out if you understand a little bit too much as we now go down towards turn ten throwing the car in keep it over to the left hand side and then throw it back over to the right over the, the, the little kink on the on the right hander there and then now down through the Anderson Bridge down towards the hairpin keep it nice and tidy nice and tight on the apex on the power smoothly nice clean traction there no wheel spin whatsoever and now second sector is over down towards turn number 14 down three gears the third and then actually get down to first to be fair normally I hold it in third gear through there but I got a little bit hot on the brakes and I had to use first as an emergency to get the car rotated again a little bit hot through the right hander there and they're going down the second gear when I don't normally use it through there but now underneath the bridge a little left right chicane combo another lock up on the front left and uh, the tyres start to overheat now towards the end of the lap hence why we're overheating here and uh, we're locking up everywhere but now finally the chicanes have come to an end and it's all about the final corner here and just throwing the car in hoping for the best getting on the power as soon as possible DRS are wide open across the line and that was a pretty good lap to be fair and I was happy with that one and they actually gave us P7 so overall a decent session we beat both Mercedes which is what we can do and what we should be doing and right in there P10 running up the rear and all the cars in front of us are the ones that are quicker in the R&D chart so overall a decent session and uh, not much more we could have asked for to be honest and uh, the lap was good I think some of them lock ups were a little bit unnecessary I think if I'd had a slightly clean lap I could have got Ricardo for P6 but other than that there's not much more in the lap and I was quite happy with it to be fair and uh, yeah overall a decent session and qualifying was overall a big big success hopefully Sebastian Vettel will try and turn it around starting from P13 and hopefully we could try and crack into the top 6 tomorrow but it's now time for the race for round number 15 here for the Singapore Grand Prix at Marina Bay Let's do this. A superb qualifying performance from your old F2 teammate today. You left some body work out there on the track. Were you struggling for grip? Well, thanks anyway. Hello and welcome one and all to the shining streets of Singapore. Can you believe we've been coming here for nearly a decade now? It feels like only yesterday that Felipe Massa was dragging his fuel hose down the pit lane in that eventful opening race. And in a Grand Prix won from pole position more often than not, will we see a new victor crowned today? It's a 3.1 mile lap here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit with 47% taken at full throttle. It's hot, humid and bumpy around the 13 lefts and the 10 rights of mostly slow corners. But we should see speeds of up to 200 miles per hour along the Raffles Boulevard. Anthony Davidson is alongside me in the commentary box this evening. And big race this one, a real test of endurance. Sounds right up your alley. Wouldn't you just love to be down there on the grid right now? You know what, Crofty? I'm pretty happy to be up here in my air conditioning, thank you, right now. I can't stress just how difficult these conditions can be, especially when you consider it's the longest race on the calendar in terms of time. It's also one of those races where you have to remember to keep drinking, or there's a real risk of dehydration. 
just like we saw with young Kevin Magnuson a couple of years ago, don't forget. We mentioned the bumps as well. Take a look at the onboards if you get a chance during this race. The movement in the suspension and the chassis is just incredible, and it's lots of hard work to wrestle the car around the lap here. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Great work from Lucas Weber yesterday sees him start from pole with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Magnussen, Daniel Ricciardo, Martinez, Butler, Gasly, Raikkonen and Sergio Perez. They've taken a grid penalty. Russell, Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel and Sainz. Norris, Bottas, Alexander Albon and Lance Stroll. Fiat and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid, P6 for the Singapore Grand Prix, starting on row number three after a pretty decent qualifying, to be fair, and exceeding expectations and also pretty much controlling the weather and making sure we did the lap at the right time. And uh, P6, I'd say, pretty much the best the car can do around here. And we out qualified Sebastian Vettel, which is good. So we're going to see how we get on in this race. Hopefully, we can try and go forward somehow. You know, we just literally just don't have the car for it, unfortunately. We really don't have the pace. And um, it's going to be the story like this for the rest of the the season now as we now focus on next season but having said that we're going to try our best and um I want to at least try and go for a podium if I possibly could. If not, then a top five finish would do, and I'd be happy with that. So uh, let's jump into it. First of all, though, strategy-wise, it's going to be quite interesting. As you guys saw at the start of the video, we do have a chance of rain right towards the end of the race. So that could really play into a bit of a, an interesting situation here. And the strategy for now is going to be um, a soft to hard. Originally, it was soft, medium, medium, but I've changed it to the hard tire. It might go back to the medium. It depends on when the rain arrives. I'll kind of ask on the radio and see, and then I'll decide which tire to put on at the pit stop because um, that's going to be the crucial phase of the race, you know, trying to get the first in out as long as we can in terms of distance and then also making the change into the right tyre and hopefully not having to stop again and go straight onto the inters. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's see how we get on. Hopefully we can have a decent race and uh, whenever there's rain, there's a chance for us to get a result that we wouldn't normally get. So let's jump into it and let's see if we can try and score a decent finish. It's time for round number 15 for the Singapore Grand Prix. Right, here we go then. Let's try and get a good start here as we build up the revs to the optimal range. Five lights are on and they are off and away we go at Marina Bay. Not the best start. Strong to get off the line. Play into turn one down the inside. A little lock up but we had to defend the position there from Pierre Gasly. Looks like we've got a side by side here for the leaders. We're right on the back of Daniel Ricciardo's Renault here. Going down towards turn number three or sorry, turn four actually. We've got the switch back on Ricciardo here. Very nicely done there, nice and tidy. We've got pretty high arrows, we might struggle on the straights a little bit. Side by side with the Renault, we're going to go side by side into the brake zone. Can we go around the outside using second gear? Yes, we do. And there we go, we get past Ricardo. Good start from us. And uh, being aggressive in the opening phase, let's see if we have the pace here. And um, we've now got past, I'd say, the realistic car we can overtake, which is the Renault. The next four cars, which are both Red Bulls and both Haas cars, as we both know, is. Um, they're a bit too quick so if we could just try and keep them in our sights somehow that'd be a great achievement but I think they're going to start to pull away with it and uh, tire temperature is going to be a key factor here I think we're going to struggle with them a little bit so it's important to try and manage it and like I said it's important to really get these soft tires uh, quite deep into the race maybe try and get to lap six if possible end of lap one Lucas Weber retains his lead as he currently goes quickest and uh, first into, into turn one trying to keep these Red Bulls and house cars in our sights as best as we can Goodness is for me is that final corner is pretty good. I'm actually quite quick through there, so I'll open up a nice gap. Also, you can see the minimap. Actually, Ricardo is dropping back a little bit. He seems to be struggling for pace, which is good. So let's try and utilize that to uh, get a nice early gap and see if we can try and have a little pocket of space where we're not in a constant battle with nobody. We can just try and do our own race. Okay, entering lap three now. DRS has been enabled. A little bit wider at the final corner, just picking up some understeer. DRS now enabled, so it's important to uh, get a good exit onto that back straight so that Ricardo doesn't get the run. But I think we've got enough of a gap, to be honest. We've got just enough pace to keep him at bay in the important areas, which is what we want. So overall, looking pretty good so far. The front four signs to stretch their legs now. You can see on the map as well, especially Weber really starting to run away with it now as we try to hang on. Front right is absolutely cooking. No other word for it. It's just cooking. Luckily enough, the fronts are more manageable than the rears. Once the rears start to cook, they're uh, pretty hard to keep under control. So, uh, as long as the fronts are overheating, that's fine. 
I can manage that. That's not a problem. It does feel like the AI just starting to struggle on their tyres a little bit now because I've started to pull away from Ricardo a little bit and actually catch up to the cars in front. It seems like on worn tyres, I've actually got some okay pace and the AI are struggling on their rubber now, which is good for a change. But uh, Leclerc pits in as does Lucas Weber. We're boxing this lap. Give us the best in lap you can. Yep, we'll do Jeff. I've still heard no message about the rain, so I'm going to go for the hard tyres. If I've heard something about the rain, unless I hear something this lap, it's going to be uh, hard tyres in the pit stop because uh, I want to play it safe and not have to do another stop because that's going to be my chance of getting something out of this race. Right, engine turned down. We're going to pit in. I've heard nothing on the radio, so I'm just going to proceed as normal with the strategy and go onto the hard tyres. Get it slowed down. There we go. That's a good pit entry right there. Looks like Ricardo stays out, as does one of the Mercs. Hopefully we don't get held up here. I need a quick stop from the boys. Come on. Complete. Go now. Good stuff. Two second flat. We come out in front of Devin Butler there, so we don't get held up. That's what we want to see. And it uh, looks like a few guys and mediums in front of us here. Let's see what uh, those around us are running. Looks like most of them are going to go into the medium, so we're going to be on a deficit here and a handicap with these tyres. strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. We've got a warning there, of course, in the white line. Look at all this traffic we've just come out behind of. That's annoying because uh, we could have jumped a lot of cars there. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to get through some traffic, it looks like, which is, uh, wasn't in my plans. I wish I'd stayed out one more lap in hindsight just to clear the traffic, but I'll, uh, it is where it is. Let's get to work. Let's try and make some moves and uh, keep our front wing also in one piece. If possible, we've got the Haskar there. I think that's Magnuson. Trying to make some moves in front of us here. It's all kicking off. These hard tyres feel very, very frosty at the minute. I'm not going to push them just yet. Down the inside of Giovinazzi here. Nice move at the hairpin as I was adjusting my brake bias. Didn't really talk much, so I was kind of concentrating on my own thing, but nice move in Giovinazzi there. He's early on the brake, so uh, we're going to push on. 58% brake bias worked to me quite well around here, but the second the tyres start to overheat, I have to push it back, which gives me less confidence and less speed. So it was important for me to use it while I can run it with the fresher tyres. You see Big Tronic move on Lance Straw now though. And you can see the house car there just in front. That's uh, Magnuson, I believe. I've disabled name tags, as I mentioned before, just because a lot of people wanted it in the comments. To the final corner, we're just going to back off a little bit. Try and get the momentum on the exit. There we go. DRS open. Let's try and get past Lance Straw if we can. Around the outside. Hot on the brakes into turn one. It's all kicking off around us here. Multiple cars overtaking each other. There's Ricardo. We're on the outside here. We're going to get pushed into the wall. It's every man for themselves here at the minute. As we're going to pick up the inside line. Looks like that Haas has made the move. We get some oversteer there. Got to be careful. Come on, Ferrari, to give us the full beans here as we get the run. We have to just back off here and take the outside line. If we have back down the inside, Russell in front. We'll take the position there on the Toro Rosso this time. Now can we get past George Russell and the Williams? Let's make it light work. A good exit there. We're going to put him on the back foot. Into this next left hand up. Switch back. There we go. Easy move. Russell in a little bit too hot on the brakes. And we make the nice easy move. That's Leclerc in front, surprisingly. Not Magnussen. So uh, let's try and keep up there on medium tyres. Of course, we're on the hard, so we're going to have a lot less pace than them. And Ricardo also managed to overcut us in the pit exit. I don't know, in, in, amongst all that craziness, you saw Ricardo leave the pit lane there. So I should have, in hindsight, just set up for one more lap. We would have cleared the traffic and it would have been fine. So, uh, my bad. So we're going to have to try and recover now and uh, make up for that. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. Dry seem like the fastest tyre at the moment. There we go then. Rain's in the way. I had to ask because uh, I feel like I wasn't getting any updates. On the radio, so we're gonna see if um, that rain is true. I've turned down the amount of radio updates I get, so it stops interrupting me while I'm talking before this race. Hopefully, um, I still get weather updates because if not, I'm off to change it back to the previous setting. It was all kicking off in front as uh, Le Le Leclerc and Ricardo had to make a move on Alex Albon. They've got past him eventually, but they got stuck behind Albon for the entire third sector. And Albon not giving up on this position yet on Charles Leclerc, but he's gonna have to yield, and there's some damage there as he gets put into the wall there by Charles Leclerc, but he should have just backed out of that one. Either the way, we're now going to be on the back of Alex Albon here, who's got a damaged car now. And uh, pretty worn tyres. Put him under some pressure here. We're going to get held up, unfortunately, through this section. Hopefully we can launch one in towards the uh, hairpin. 
on the brakes there. I had to get off the brakes completely, just to let the car roll into the corner in pretty much engine brake because uh, I was locking up too much there. Luckily, Albon didn't turn in and uh, had to stay wide. I'm gonna make an adjustment to the brake bar here and push it back a little bit because I'm locking up a little bit too much. Let's get off to the floor though. See if we can try and somehow keep up with him. That's the good thing about these hard tires. I can keep pushing and pushing lap after lap and uh, we'll have decent pace. There's a battle going in front now between a racing point at Ricardo and Leclerc. These battles are what kind of keeping me in the mix because they lose a lot of time. So I'm kind of keeping them in my sights. Hopefully long enough that they might pit in and then we obviously benefit from the rain. I'm kind of hoping the rain gets delayed here and takes as long as possible. And uh, I want this traffic to kind of be a key factor here in this race and try and play a part to help me out because uh, we don't have the pace to challenge any of the guys in front to be honest. Leclerc's been stuck behind Bottas the entire lap. Uh, so Sebastian pits in. And a few others on those mediums pit in. So those mediums do about 12 laps, now we know. As we jump up to P8, meanwhile Leclerc making the move on Bottas. The turn one, side by side. Bottas trying to hang on there around the outside. We're going to set up a mega switch back here. This might be my chance to get ahead of the Haas, although Leclerc is a good exit. Vettel onto the hard tyre, so he's going to try and go long now, like myself. Waiting for the rain to arrive. I've got a chance to get past Bottas here, but unfortunately, he's going to have the, the slipstream and the DRS on Leclerc. And that racing point is still pretty quick. Pretty slippery on the straight line. And we can't quite make the move. We're going to slip in there and get in a little space. Okay, we don't think we're far away from some rain. I'll keep you updated as the conditions change. There we go. There's the first rain message. Not far away from some rain as we're sat by side with Bottas here. Come on, Ferrari. Inside line for this corner. Let's take it. There we go. That's what we want. Right then, after P7 then. Let's try and hang in there. The traffic is helping me out in terms of keeping up with Leclerc. But we've got to keep an eye on that weather now. We've got McLaren of Norris in the pit lane. And there we go, back up to P6. We are back where we were because we lost the position to Ricardo due to strategy when he set up one more lap. So this is where we are now, net P6 in this race. Back to where we started at the very beginning on lap one. So uh, let's crack on now. Let's see when the rain arrives. Hopefully, like I said, it gets delayed and it takes very long because uh, that would help me out. Okay, it's starting to rain. First raindrop starting to come down. Let's see how this rain makes things worse and let's see how long it lasts at this rate gotta keep it on the skies it could go to instant within a lap or it could take a couple laps let's see how we get on but in hindsight i've got it wrong i should have gone to the mediums probably okay even though we're seeing cars struggle in these conditions if we pit for inters now we're going to be too slow and we'll burn them out make the best of it for the time being yeah i agree with that track still feels pretty okay for dry tires the rain on screen and on my camera looks a little bit worse than what the track feels like. It still feels pretty grippy. But there is some on that's ticking in. It's a long lap, so we need to make the right decision. But I think the right one for now is to stay out for at least one more lap. But the track is declining quite quickly in terms of quality. I can't lie. DRS disabled. There we go. The track's definitely feeling pretty damn horrid right at the minute. Oh, lots of understeer, lots of oversteer, all of that. Just got to try and hang on. And uh, pit in, get to the inters. The track goes really dry there, I've cut that corner because uh, the grip caught me out. Lots of oversteer. Struggling for grip here, big time. DRS has been disabled by the stewards. DRS will be offline. To the pit lane, I've completely run wide there. The grip catching me out. Let's slow it down and let's not speed. There we go. Right, we've made it. On to the inters we go. Let's uh, have a nice clean stop and no hold ups please boys, let's do this once again. Go, go, go. 1.924, that is what I'm talking about, fantastic stop onto the intermediate tyres. Vettel shouldn't get held Sebastian's up that badly, in for his stop. he's had a good race so far, strategy working out for him, he also went for the hard tyres, shame because if Sebastian had just started on the hards he wouldn't have had to have stopped at all. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit, we'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. He could have just started the race on the hards and go straight to the Inters either way. We're on the Inters now. Hopefully it stays in these rest of the race because the wet tyre is not one that I'm very quick on. The Inters I'm okay with. So uh, let's just see how we get on. But I do think this race is going to finish how it currently is. I'd be surprised. Unless a safety car something happens, which hasn't happened in 36 episodes pretty much. Um, it's looking like a P6 for us in this race because the guys in front are just too quick. I'm struggling here. I don't really like how the car feels. I've got very little confidence in the car and I'm actually getting caught up quite quickly by the cars behind. 
This could be a long final stint. Okay, now I'm starting to find some pace, starting to pick up the, the rhythm a bit, getting comfortable. Just managed to put six tenths into the gap now of uh, myself and Devin Butler here, trying to secure this P6 now. And uh, the track's a lot wetter than it was before, so I'm starting to feel a lot more com confident now. And the inters are working properly, so it's giving me more pace. Green flag. Oh, yellow flag behind. Looks like Devin Butler's had an issue, or maybe it's the Renault behind of Perez. By the way, yellow flag. There you go, Perez out of the race, confirmed. First retirement of the Grand Prix, probably no safety car VSE from it as we haven't had one yet. So we probably won't get one. Oof. Whoa, ho, ho. I held my breath there, big time. How the hell did I keep my right rear out of the barrier? Gee whiz. Oh, big bit of oversteer there. Almost lost that over the line. I've got good pace at the minute. I'm a little bit quicker than the Leclerc, about a tenth a lap. Devon's got good pace as well. He's about a tenth slower than me. So Devon's actually lapping the same pace as the top teams. And uh, we're about a tenth quicker. So it's all very close at the minute in these conditions. The intermediates are working well for me. And uh, we're looking pretty comfortable here to bring this one home in P6, which for me would be a good result. And uh, the maximum we could have done, really, because Ricardo ultimately outdid me on strategy, so fair play to him. Feels like the track's really got bad in the last half or so. The rain's really coming down, and I'm a lot slower, about two seconds off now, while I was doing before. Little, little grip on the track in a minute, and the rain's really coming down here. Feels like it's probably full wet conditions, so we're going to try and hang out on the inters, I think. There we go, then. The fireworks go off. Lucas Weber has already crossed the line and won the race here for the Singapore Grand Prix. Very dominant performance from him, very, very quick all weekend long, and he was the deserving winner on the day. I'm just trying to limp home now, struggling in these conditions, and uh, the rain's really, really poor. I mean, it's definitely full wet tyre conditions now, there are, say, monsoon conditions, but uh, we're going to hang out on the engines, of course, as you can see the fireworks all going off there here in Marina Bay. But uh, yeah, the best we could do today, P6 in my opinion, not much more we could have got out of the car, and uh, this is where the car is, and it probably will be for the rest of the season as we turn our focus towards next season trying to desperately close that gap and win our championships with Ferrari but here we go through the front couple of corners decent race P6 we started there we finished there I'll take that GG's Grazie ragazzi Forza Ferrari Grazie Grande lavoro Ok good job mate really well done that was a fantastic drive It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come out on top. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. How do you feel the weather affected the outcome today? Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? Well, thanks anyway. Right, so here we have the final race results. Lucas Weber wins the Singapore Grand Prix for Red Bull, picking up the fastest lap in the process there with a 38-0. Much quicker than anybody else and absolutely dominant here today. Kevin Magnussen, P2. Lewis Hamilton, P3. With Daniel Ricciardo, 
P4 for Renault, very good race from him, and Charles Leclerc P5, and then us only P6, the best we could do, and 50 seconds off of the lead. Sebastian Vettel, P8, we actually um, managed to beat Mercedes in that one, and actually outscored them as Sebastian uh, managed to split the silver arrows. And overall, a decent race from Seb, from P13 to P8, on the exact same strategy as me, pretty much, you know, uh, drives onto inters, starting the mediums, onto the hards. But uh, yeah, good pace, Sebastian, really did, and it showed. And um, yeah, good to see that he actually recovered into the points. And then we've got Gazi and Ryan kind of running out the top 10 with Norris and Verstappen missing out on the points. Towards the bottom, we have Sergio Perez as the only retirement on the Grand Prix with Albon, Russell, Giovinazzi and Stroll lapped. But now, what does that race mean for the standings? As you can see, we're currently third. We've got a nice gap to Leclerc. My target this season is probably to keep that gap to Leclerc for the rest of the season and try and finish in third place in the Drivers' Championship. Sebastian Vettel, still P7, not too far off Devin Butler. And then there's quite a bit of a gap there to Kevin Magnussen. But you never know, it could still happen if you find some form later on in the season. In terms of the constructors, it's going to be hard to hold second place, but you know we're going to do our best. Haas gained a big chunk of points in that race, and this is the closest they've been in a long, long time. So Haas really put the pressure on. I think the realistic target is going to be third place in the constructors and uh, keep Mercedes behind us. But uh, yeah, guys, that is it for this episode of Career Mode, and I'm going to keep saving points. You know, really stacking them up now because we've only got I think five races left, so. It's important to maximise the points and really uh, get as many as we can underneath us before we go into the new season. And uh, I'll probably purchase a couple of department efficiency upgrades soon, both for making things cheaper and also less chance of failure. But uh, yeah, we're going to save up a big, big, big chunk of points, guys. And uh, that's going to be the theme now for the rest of the season. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Drop a like if you did and subscribe if you are new for daily from law and content and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and in the video check out the two videos on the screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you for watching but i'll see you in my next video very soon but until then it's goodbye from me